How's it going, everyone? Happy Monday. So uh, we got a bit of college football news today. Now, they announced this, I think, like a week or two ago. But uh, on August 24th, they said they were going to be releasing the AP Top 25 poll. And the uh, interesting thing about this AP Top 25 is the fact they said they're still going to include Big Ten teams. They're still going to include Pac-12 teams as if the regular season was happening, as if all these teams were going to be playing. Although we're going to be missing out on uh, two of the Power 5 conferences, maybe, we'll, maybe we're still going to have a season. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. We do have the AP Top 25, the first AP Top 25 pool of the season. And I wanted to get a video um, giving you my instant reaction, my instant thoughts. I'm currently at my girlfriend's place, so I don't have my camera, I don't have my nice microphone, so I'm recording this on my Mac, so unfortunately you can't get my uh, facial reactions um, if there's some really crazy uh, rankings on here, so I'm just going to give you my reactions, my thoughts. I loaded up the AP Top 25 poll on my computer, I haven't looked at them yet, I have no clue. I immediately scrolled all the way to the bottom so that way I can go from 25 all the way up to 1. So without further ado, let's get to my rankings. I was going to give my own personal top 25 how I thought it should be, but with just how everything's going, again, how the Pac-12, the Big Ten, they're not playing, I, I didn't want to go ranking those teams in my top 25 just because I thought, you know, what's the point? Um, you know, there's no point of it. I'm, I'm grateful that we're getting a top 25 at all, but... With how this college football season looks like it's going to happen, you know, it's it's kind of a drag. It's kind of a bummer that we're not going to be seeing these teams competing against one another. It'll be interesting to see, though, what they're going to do, you know, with the regular season, especially with the regular top 25 once it starts. Are we going to see, you know, more group of five teams? Are we going to see some random Sunbelt teams crack the top 25? Because I think the Sunbelt, they, they're one of the conferences that haven't announced or canceling yet, so... What's the top 25 actually going to look like when the season starts? Because I don't think we're going to have, like, Oregon, Ohio State, Michigan. I don't think we're going to have those teams staying in the top 25 during the regular season. So, it'll be interesting to see, but we do have our first AP Top 25 poll. So, let's take a look at it, and uh, let's see how many things I can complain about. Alright, uh, let's look at the others receiving votes. And I know it doesn't matter, but I see Arizona State. They come in at, what, 29? I was expecting a big year for them. I was actually working on a series of videos where I was going to be breaking down each team in each conference, how many games that they were going to win. And I had ASU actually projected for 9 wins this year, competing for a Pac-12 title spot. So, seeing them come this close to a crack in the top 25... That's a drag. But looking at these other teams, we've got Memphis, Virginia Tech, Boise State, Miami, Louisville, Appalachian State, Washington, Kentucky, Indiana, Baylor, Cal, TCU, Virginia, Navy, Florida State, SMU, Mississippi State, Air Force, Northwestern, UAB, each getting a vote. So, uh, yeah, those are the ones receiving votes. Memphis, they received the most votes. They didn't crack the top 25. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this kind of like how the College Football Playoff Committee does it where they kind of go like 25 through 20, then I'm going to go 19 through 15, 14 through 10, and then I'm going to go 10 through 1. So we're going to do little chunks here and there to see how exactly it's looking. So right away, for whatever reason, I guess Tennessee doesn't have a logo. I don't know what they're doing with their logo, but uh, Tennessee comes in at 25. I guess that's my initial first take, the fact that Tennessee, they did finish 8-5 and five last season. They finished the season really strong. I forget what their winning streak was, but I, I want to say they won 4, 5, 6 games to close the season out, something like that. So Tennessee, uh, are they back? Are they, you know, <laughs> inching their way back to relevance? We'll have to wait and see, but it is kind of cool to see Tennessee back in the top 25. Iowa, Iowa State. Uh, I'm really high in Iowa State coming into the year uh, prior to this whole shutdown. I thought Iowa State actually could be contending for the Big 12 title. So I'm really high on the Cyclones this year. Utah, we got our first Pac-12 team. They come in at 22. Uh, Utah looked like last year they were potentially going to be a playoff team, and then they choked bad in the Pac-12 title game and then against Texas in their bowl game. So Utah, hopefully they can bounce back this year. And then we have our first two group of five teams, UCF, Cincinnati. Uh, in my opinion, those are probably going to be the two best group of five schools in college football this year, along with Memphis. I'm really high on Memphis, but Cincinnati, UCF, uh, those are the, if, if any team this year in this weird college football format, again, I don't know if they're going to have a college football playoff, but if any group of five team wants to make a run and potentially make a case for a playoff spot, I think it's going to be either Cincinnati, UCF, or uh, Memphis that does that. So we got Minnesota, they come in at 19, now they're not going to play in the fall, they're going to play in the spring. Hopefully, uh, I, I'm not as high on Minnesota, especially after losing Rashad Bateman, their best wide receiver. Uh, I don't think they're going to recapture what they did last year, but 
who knows i mean they still have a lot of good pieces but that's what we're just gonna have to wait and see in the fall north carolina they come in at number 18 i know they were seven and six last year but what mac brown has done with the tar heels has been absolutely remarkable he has done a terrific job with them sam howell i think he is an early heisman front runner this guy is the real deal he's a fantastic quarterback and i get it they were seven and six last year but they had so many one possession games so many close like three or four point losses that north carolina they easily could have been a nine or ten win team we saw them almost take down clemson last year so north carolina i'm really excited for them they're a sleeper in the acc i mean i think it's still clemson's conference to lose but if there's going to be any team that has a chance to take them down, it's the Dar Heels. USC, they come in at 17. Now, I was really high on USC this offseason. I think when I did my uh, Pac-12 predictions, I had them either going undefeated or losing only one game. And that's just because they have a really, really, really good team. Keaton Slovis, we talk about, you know, I talked about Sam Hell being a fantastic freshman quarterback last year. Keaton Slovis was another fantastic freshman quarterback. Came in, wasn't even supposed to be the starter, but he was an absolute beast. I know SC, it seems like for years and years, is this the year they finally come back? Is this the year they finally bounce back? I, I thought that this was going to be the year that USC would go back to being a relevant competitive team. And unfortunately, we just can't see it. Um, in the, again, in the spring, however that works, we'll have to wait and see. But I, I was really high on SC. I had them as my Pac-12 preseason winner. I thought they were going to win the Pac-12. And again, I, I thought they had a chance to potentially compete for a playoff spot. So at 17, I really like that pick. Michigan at 16, I, I don't even know what to say. What are we going to get from them this year? I don't know. We're going to have to wait to the spring for them. Uh, I said this last year repeatedly on my podcast when I had Michigan as my preseason favorite to reach the college football playoff. And the reason I had them reach in the playoff last year was for the reason that they're due. This team, they're due to have a fantastic season. And what will, will that be this year in the spring? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see, but I got no problem with that. Oklahoma State of 15, they have the best quarterback, wide receiver, running back trio in the country, I firmly believe. And just like Iowa State, I, I think Oklahoma State is one of these teams that potentially could make a run at the Big 12 title game. Will they? I, I'm not exactly sure, but arguably their offense is one of the best, one of the most exciting in the country. So I get their defense, you know, has some question marks, but any time that you have an offense like like Oklahoma State does, especially with Sanders, Hubbard, Wallace, I mean, that that's a great trio. As I said, I think it's the best trio in the country. Look for Oklahoma State to make some noise this year in the Big 12. Moving on now, we go 14 through 10. Texas, last year, they were not back, 8 and 5. But uh, I actually had Texas. We did our Big 12 preview show last week. I know I'm probably going to receive a lot of hate for this. I'm going to receive a lot of backlash. I had Texas going undefeated uh, in 2020. Now, if you know me, you know I always have those bold predictions. Last year, I had Oregon going undefeated. Ultimately, they didn't. They did come close to going undefeated, but they didn't. I have Texas going undefeated. I'm really high on them. I really like their team offensively and defensively. I think they're going to make some noise in the Big 12 this year. So Texas, I like the rank, ranking at 14. Texas A&M at 13, uh, I I think that's too high. I'm personally not a fan of Texas A&M. I'm really not sold on Jimbo Fisher uh, of what he's done so far with the Aggies. Now, I know that they've had some close games. They've had a brutal schedule over the course of the last few years. Kellen Mond, I think, is a decent quarterback, but I don't think he's a good enough quarterback to lead Texas A&M to that next level for them to take that next step. Now, I know about a month or two ago that Kellen Mond came out and he said he firmly believes that what LSU did last year, how they took that massive leap, he thinks that Texas A&M, they have the chance to do that. Now, playing in the SEC, they definitely have the chance to pick up some great wins and to climb up those rankings, but just from what I've seen, I'm not completely sold on Texas A&M. Top 25 team, I think they are, but having them ranked at number 13, I personally think that's a little too high. Again, they can come out, they can prove me wrong, they can go, I don't know, I don't know how many games the SEC is playing this year, I think they're playing 10 or 11. They can lose one or two games this year and I wouldn't be shocked, but I'm not sold on Texas A&M, so I'm not really sold on that number 13 ranking. Wisconsin, they come in at number 12, that seems fitting every year, Wisconsin. Uh, they're around this mark. Um, they're always good. They win 10, 11 games, and they have that one or two game stretch where they just look awful. They lose games they shouldn't. So Wisconsin, nothing really to say there, but unfortunately, we're not going to get to see them until the spring. So nothing really much to add there. Auburn, they come in at 11. It's funny. Actually, I posted something yesterday on my channel, the fact that tonight, which by the way, tonight I'm going to be doing a full SEC preview on my podcast so if you want to tune into that that's at 8 p.m eastern again a full sec preview someone commented saying whatever auburn is ranked 
uh, don't even bother because whatever they're ranked, it turns out they never finish anywhere close to that. So Auburn, they come in at 11. Um, that means either they're going to they're, they're gonna finish the season at number three or they're going to finish the season unranked. So I'm not going to go too in depth on that. Notre Dame, they come in at 10. They are now in the ACC, I guess, for 2020. And again, every year, Notre Dame, they're always there. They just have those one or two games that they just can't get the job done. Or they go to the playoff and they look absolutely embarrassing and they get humiliated on the national stage. So Notre Dame at 10, they're probably going to stay around that range all season. It will be interesting to see them, though, in the ACC. I actually think by Notre Dame moving to the ACC, I think their schedule actually gets easier. Because I know Notre Dame gets a lot of flack for not playing in a conference. Notre Dame always has a pretty difficult non-conference schedule. So I think actually going to the ACC benefits Notre Dame this year. So I actually wouldn't be shocked if they, you know, climb, climb the rankings. They do play Clemson, so that is going to be a tough game. But aside from that, I, I wouldn't be shocked to see Notre Dame potentially only lose one game. All right, we're going to move up now one spot at a time. Oregon, they come in at number nine. Oregon, I was really high on them coming into this year because I thought they had the chance to be the best team in the Pac-12 and potentially make a push for the playoff. But my only problem with the Ducks this year is the play of their quarterback. Tyler Show, not much experience whatsoever. Would he be enough to get Oregon to the playoff? I'm not exactly sure. Could he come out and be a fantastic quarterback? Could he be potentially, you know, a Pac-12 player of the year type? Maybe a Heisman sleeper? He probably could be, but I'm just not sold on Oregon having a brand new quarterback with how much talent they have surrounding him. Oregon, we'll see how they do in the spring, but I, I think defensively and offensively, Oregon is the best team in the Pac-12. I'm really high on them. A lot of really, really good players are going to be high draft picks in the coming years, but again, it's just the quarterback play. It worries me, and that's probably why they come in at 9. Had Justin Herbert still been there for this season, Oregon would probably be top 5, top 4, I would say. But I think 9, that's a very fitting ranking for them. Coming in number 8 is Florida. I, I've said this, you know, leading up to uh, the season over the last few months. I think Florida is a sleeper in the college football playoff this year. I, I really like Florida. I've said this the last few months, but I, I firmly believe that Florida has a chance to be a college football playoff team this year. Now, now for all of you SEC fans out there that don't believe me, that's okay. Don't worry, you know, I, I'm not offended that, that you think my take is hot, but I really like the Gators this year. I think Kyle Trask is the real deal. I think he could be a Heisman candidate, and I think Florida, I think they can win the SEC, and I think they can make the college football playoffs. So Florida at 8, that's another good ranking I, I really like. Penn State, they come in at number 7. Uh, I, I personally think that might be a little too high for them. They finished 11-2 and last season. Um, they're losing Micah Parsons on defense. That's a huge, huge piece for them. They are going to be playing in the spring potentially, hopefully. Uh, I, I think Sean Clifford, I think he's a good quarterback. I really like Journey Brown, but I, I just don't think Penn State is worthy of being ranked number seven. Personally, I think Florida's a better team. I think Oregon's a better team. I think Notre Dame and Auburn are better teams. I even think Texas might be a better team. So Penn State, uh, top 15, I would say. Number seven, I personally think that's just a little too high for them. LSU comes in at number six. LSU, this is going to be the most intriguing team to take a look at uh, in 2020 with how much they lost. They lost Joe Burrow. They lost Clyde Edwards-Alaire. They lost, I mean, they, they, they set the record, I think, for most overall draft picks in an NFL draft, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, this past offseason. So they lose a lot, but they're still going to be a really good team. Miles Brennan, how does he look this year, you know, as the new quarterback for LSU? Can they, I mean, they still have plenty of talent. They still have a great team. They still have Coach O there at the helm, but LSU, they're definitely not going to go undefeated this year. Uh, number six, I mean, it's tough to really have the reigning national champion, arguably one of the best teams we've seen over the last 25 years. It's tough to have them fall too many spots. I, I do think there are going to be some hiccups for LSU this year. I do think they're going to lose a few games. Number six, I, I think that's fair, but ultimately when the season's over, I, I wouldn't be shocked to see LSU out of the top 10, maybe out of the top 15 potentially. Oklahoma comes in at number five. They're the favorite in the Big 12. Um, no, no, no debate there. Spencer Rattler, he's the biggest question mark. You know, he's one of the highest recruited quarterbacks that Oklahoma's had, you know, in recent memory. He was the number one quarterback recruit when he came to Oklahoma, you know, a year or two ago. So how good is he? We don't really know yet. Spencer Rattler, he can come out and be the best Oklahoma quarterback they've had in years, or he could come out and he could be one of the worst ones they've had in years. We don't know. If Spencer Rattler looks good, if he lives up to expectations, Oklahoma, they're probably going to go undefeated. They're probably going to be in the college football playoff, and they're probably going to get embarrassed in the college football playoff as well. But uh, I think Oklahoma, they're the team to beat in the uh, Big 12 this year, but it all comes down to how Spencer Rattler plays. Again, he has the chance to be a Heisman winner. He has the chance to be the real deal. But until I see him prove it, 
uh, I'm gonna hold my breath. We got Georgia, they come in at number four. I got no problem with that. Georgia, you know, again, probably the second best team in the SEC this upcoming year. Kirby Smart, what's he gonna do? Who's going to be the starting quarterback for Georgia this year? That's an interesting question. Is it going to be Jamie Newman? Is it going to be JT Daniels? We'll have to wait and see. I mean, I, that's going to be the biggest storyline to follow, especially for Georgia. Georgia, I got no problem having them being one of my college football playoff picks. I think they have an easy chance to get there. Will they? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. But again, Georgia, not much to say aside from the fact I'm really looking forward to seeing who wins that starting quarterback job. At number three, Alabama. Again, you, you talk about a quarterback job. Who's going to win? Is it going to be Mac Jones? Is it going to be Bryce Young? But talent-wise, this has a chance to be one of the most talented teams that Alabama's had over the last decade. I mean, you look at them, offensively, they're stacked. Defensively, they're stacked. I know last year was a down year for them going 11-2. and two. I mean, how about that? A down year is going 11-2. and two. I think we're going to see Bama bounce back this year. I'm really looking forward to them. I think they're going to be a threat in the SEC. Yeah, I'm not going to be shocked if Nick Saban gets them back to where we've seen them in years past. I'm not going to be shocked if Alabama goes undefeated this year. They have a really good team. Really looking forward to seeing uh, how all these guys work. I'm really looking forward to seeing this receiving core. I mean, this receiving court, Alabama, is going to be absolutely nuts this year. Coming in at number two, we got Ohio State. I think that's fair. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get to see them this fall. Hopefully, we're able to. Hopefully, Justin Fields and company are able to uh, rally something together and save the Big Ten so we can get them in the fall. If not, we're going to have to wait till the spring where uh, Justin Fields said he's still going to be playing. I'm not exactly sure because this guy's a guaranteed top 10 draft pick, so I'm not exactly sure why he'd want to play in the spring, especially... You know, is are you competing for a Heisman? Are you competing for a national championship? At that point, I'm not exactly certain, but this Ohio State team, they're going to be good. They're stacked. Uh, no problem with them being the number two team in the country. Um, it's just a drag, man. Uh, I've talked about this again in, in previous videos. That Ohio State-Oregon game, that was probably my most anticipated game of the entire college football season because you have two top four, top five teams going at it, and I, I would have loved to see who could have beaten who, and the fact we're not going to get that game, it's an absolute drag for me. So, Ohio State, hopefully we could see them in some form in the spring. As I mentioned, hopefully we can somehow see them in the fall. Maybe something happens and we, we get to see Big Ten football, but, man, what, what a drag that we're not going to get to see Ohio State compete against some of these teams that we could have seen them competing against. I, it's too early to tell, but I think this easily could have been the best Ohio State team they've had in recent years, but we're just not going to know until the spring, sadly. And to no surprise, coming in at number one, the Clemson Tigers, uh, no, no surprise here. They were in the national championship again last year, and they're returning so many great pieces. I get they lost Justin Ross. That, that was kind of a big blow for them uh, you know, a month or two ago. But Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, one of the best defenses in all the country. Uh, Clemson, they I think they deserve the number one ranking. If I were to do my own personal top 25, this top three is actually how I would have had it. I would have had Clemson at one, Ohio State at two, Alabama at three. The rest, I'm not exactly sure where I would have gone with it, but I, I overall like Clemson at number one. I think they're the best team. Really looking forward to seeing how they do this upcoming season. That Clemson-Notre Dame game is going to be fantastic. Really looking forward to that one, and it's going to be interesting to see how Clemson fares against some of these other ACC teams this year, because I do think this is the best the ACC has been over the last few years, so I think Clemson might have a few... By, by their standards, close games, meaning games that are within 10 going into the fourth quarter. But yeah, Clemson, they're the best team. Looking forward to seeing them this year. Looking forward to seeing Trevor Lawrence. Looking forward to seeing Travis Etienne. And again, that amazing defense they have. So overall, I like them as the number one pick. Overall, the first AP top 25. I really don't have many problems with it. As I said, there were a few teams that thought they were too high, too low, something like that. But no real issues here. I did like the fact that they released the top 25 had this been a regular college football season. So, so we still got to see where teams would have been ranked. But it is kind of a drag that we're not going to see all these teams competing this fall. Um, I'm going to stay optimistic. Maybe something happens and we still get to see everyone play this fall. But as of right now, likely that's not going to happen. So... Yeah, here's our first AP Top 25. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it's going to be interesting to see what happens moving forward, how they're going to work the Top 25. You know, not having Big Ten teams, not having Pac-12 teams. Are we going to see more group of five teams crack the Top 25? Or are we going to see, you know, some of these other Power 5 teams that you know aren't necessarily as good? Are they going to be cracking the Top 25? So it's going to be a weird college football season. At least we got some normality with the AP Top 25. 
And yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts with the top 25 in the comment section below. Let me know what team you thought was too high. Let me know what team you thought was too low. Let me know what one of my outlandish takes you thought was by far the worst I had. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I love interacting with you guys. I'm going to be in the comments, replying to a lot of the comments. Because, again, I, I know we're not going to be having normal college football. But having a top 25 poll is, it makes things a little better. It makes things a little, a little happier for me. Because I always like talking college football. And I always love talking top 25 polls because i always have hot takes uh whatever the rankings are so as i mentioned leave a comment down below and as i said earlier in the video if you want to see a full sec preview breakdown catch that tonight on my channel 8 p.m eastern 5 p.m pacific the harris highlight show we're gonna be going in depth on every team in the sec given our predictions given some players to look out for some teams to look out for so if you're an sec fan or just a college football fan in general Tune into my channel. We're live at 8 p.m. Eastern tonight. You can interact with us in the live chat. It's a lot of fun if you haven't caught a show before. But yeah, guys, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really helps the video. It really helps the channel grow. It takes, you know, only a few seconds to give a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below so I can reply and interact with you guys. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Lots of college football content coming, so if you're a college football fan, definitely the place for you. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Hopefully, I'll see you guys tonight in my live show, but if not... I'll see you on my channel for my next video.